Welcome. This is a video going over just kind of a bunch of small things that we've uh, just sort of haven't touched on, but uh, are all separately kind of important and all taken together <laughs> uh, will help you analyze circuits. Um, so first uh, are some measuring devices, ammeters and voltmeters. Uh, second, we'll talk about real batteries and internal resistance, uh, the difference between like ideal EMF and the actual voltage across the battery. Um, then talk about shorts and how to deal with them in circuits, uh, what a short is and how to deal with it. Uh, and then uh, grounds in a circuit diagram. So this is not quite a new circuit element, but a new circuit symbol where it's it's three lines that sort of decrease in, uh, in size. Okay, so the first thing, uh, ammeters and voltmeters. So the first thing is that uh, an ammeter has zero resistance. So an ammeter, uh, you, you should think of this word as an amp meter. So an ammeter uh, measures current and a voltmeter measures voltage. Uh, so this thing measure, has the symbol V for a voltmeter measuring voltage. And an ammeter, amp meter, uh, has that symbol uh, with an A. So A circle or a V circle. Um, the amp meter has zero resistance. And the voltmeter has infinite resistance. Okay, in the ideal case, the, these are true. Really, the voltmeter has some finite resistance, and the ammeter has some small, but uh, maybe negligible, maybe not negligible resistance. Um, but you know, in the ideal case, when we we see these in the in the circuit diagram, uh, whether how they'll affect the circuit, uh, this is important, whether it's zero or, or infinite resistance. So a voltmeter, uh, a voltmeter is safer to use. Uh, you can always take a voltmeter. So both of these two things have two ends, right? Two prongs. So imagine like uh, you have a voltmeter, you have two things, you can just stick it anywhere. You can stick it in a wall outlet and that's fine. Like <laughs> you're probably not gonna kill yourself with it. Um, you can, so, so you take a voltmeter and you touch one end here, touch one end on the, over here and it'll read off the voltage difference across the, those two points. So, uh, so you either get a plus or a minus number. If you took you know, this end and connected it here and took this end and connected it over here, you'll get the opposite sign. So it matters um, how it's connected and you can always reverse it and get the other sign here. Um, but you know, for the most part, we're just trying to track what the delta V is across a circuit element. So Kirchhoff's loop rule will still apply. You, know, you could take, take your voltmeter there and take your voltmeter here you know, for the two ends connected to those two spots. And you should get the same delta V for those two things. Um, notice how you connect a voltmeter in parallel with anything that you want to know the voltage across. And because it's an infinite resistance thing, like if R was infinity for this thing, it's not going to affect the resist the current that, or the circuit at all, right? Whatever current is going on in the circuit, it has no desire. It, we're not going to modify the circuit at all because like if you have two resistors in parallel uh, and one of them is infinite resistance, is the same, it's the same thing as that thing not being there. Right, no current will go through that branch. So it's the same thing as, so it's not affecting the circuit. Okay, so connect voltmeters in parallel with the circuit element. For an ammeter, uh, it's a little bit more complicated in how it works because you can't just take an ammeter and connect it like this. This is gonna mess up the circuit because if you have zero resistance, you're, and we'll talk about the word shorting later, but what you're doing is you're basically saying, uh, you're affecting the circuit. Like none of the current's going to want to go through here. All of it's going to want to go through this wire, because the six ohm is like infinitely more resistance than through the ammeter. The ammeter has close to zero resistance. And you don't generally with these measuring devices, you don't want to actually affect the circuit. You're just trying to measure the circuit as it normally exists. So for an ammeter, you actually have to break up. Maybe that's a bad symbol, but you actually have to uh, open up the circuit right here. So you have to open it up. You have to take this branch and then connect it to the ammeter and then close it up again. Right. So actually, after you redraw this circuit, it's going to be the, the uh, EMF source. It's going to be your ammeter in series with the resistor, with the six ohm resistor. And see how in series with this thing zero resistance, it's not actually affecting the circuit. And you're forcing whatever the current is in the circuit, you're forcing it to go through the ammeter. So it's measuring the actual current that goes on in the in the circuit. All right. So connect ammeters in series with the circuit element that you want to know the current through, 
and connect voltmeters in parallel. And be careful with ammeters because they, you can actually short out the fuse because you you know if you have zero resistance you can uh, and you're not careful you can connect it across the voltage and uh, have a really big current going through it maybe blow the fuse you know. all right so that's the first of four things um the second is any real battery actually has some resistance inside it um so we've been treating these voltage sources as ideal cases so we a lot of times this e is also it, it has some um loaded meaning and that we're treating these uh emf sources as ideal so if this is like a 1.5 volt, volt battery we're assuming that this is going to be 1.5 volts no matter what it's connected to but actually uh any real battery the actual terminals of the battery um have uh some resistance inside and a lot of times a lot of books will use a lowercase r for the internal resistance of the battery and you can model this as well those resistors just in series with the battery so see how like in an actual circuit if you took an, a real life physical battery with some internal resistance and you hooked it up and you hooked a resistor across it you can start to discover the effects you can just start to discover how big this internal resistance is by measuring a couple values like or plug in a couple different resistors and start measuring the current and you can start to infer what this value is of the internal resistance Generally, batteries start to go bad because not because the EMF drops a lot. Like your 1.5 battery, by the time it's it's bad and you can't use it anymore, it's like 1.35 volts or something, 1.4 volts, which is not terrible. It's just that this internal resistance actually increases quite a bit, and that's what makes it unusable a lot of times. Okay, uh, a short circuit. So if you took a battery with a a, pre a pretty new battery. Uh, so that it has a small internal resistance and you just took a wire and you connected the two ends you're shorting out the battery or you created a short circuit what this means is that you've connected a very small resistance across the terminals of a battery or any emf source and because it's such small resistance remember v equals ir uh see so if the current if the resistance the overall resistance of the circuit is very very small the current's going to be very very big uh, and that big current is going to produce a lot of heat, right? The I squared R power is going to be huge. So you're going to generate a lot of heat. You might even melt the wire. Uh, and you're also going to maybe ruin the battery because you're using up, you're using it up so quickly. So in general, we don't like shorts, um, short circuits. Um, and also uh, you want to be aware of how to treat shorts in a, in a uh, circuit diagram. So for example, if we had this, we had this resistor. If we took a wire and we just shorted out the circuit element, um, it's basically like a, a zero resistance wire. So if you took, if this was R1, this is R2, and we took a really small resistance wire and we connected it in parallel across R2, we are shorting out resistor R2. So in other words, if you did one over R plus one over R2 equals one over R equivalent, if this is much, much, much smaller than this, uh then the one over r2 is a small modification this uh doesn't really affect that quantity very much and so our equivalent is basically just the wire and what you've done is you've removed this thing from the circuit you've shorted out that circuit element you've removed it because the the, the current has no desire to go there through that resistor anymore and not only that, but even though you've modified something locally here, you've also increased the total amount of current that's coming out of the battery. Because before the total resistance was R1 plus R2, and then afterward, it's R1 plus the small R. So you've decreased the overall resistance of the circuit, which will increase the total current. So shorting out circuit elements will also increase the, the total current in the circuit. Uh, all right, done three out of four things. The last one is grounds. When you ground, a circuit element. Where is this? Here we go. Getting ground. Uh, so th these three prong things. Uh, so th these are like the positive and negative terminals uh, when you plug this into your wall outlet. This is a ground. This is just for safety. Um, and the ground is uh, so it's for safety. It's a, it's a reference potential. Um, in terms of the circuit diagrams that we have, the ground is providing a reference potential. So uh, like right here, this is zero volts. 
and we can start to talk about the potential at different points, the electric potential at different points in the circuit. So if that's zero volts and we jump across the battery, then that means this point in, in the circuit is 10 volts. Uh, this point in between is somewhere between zero and 10 volts. Right? It looks like that point would be at six volts, right? 10 minus four, or going the other way, starting at zero and adding six. Um, the important point here is that the ground, it's, it's used for safety in that it will, um, it's so if everything is connected to the ground, then everything is at this reference potential and no, no like crazy electric potentials can start to develop. Like you're not gonna get too far away from zero. Um, if you're removed from the ground and you start to modify a bunch of things like uh, getting a bunch of um, negative charges on you or, or uh, a lack of electrons, you can start to build up a really big potential difference and it builds and builds and builds until something like catastrophic happens. So a lot of times we like to just connect it to ground just to remove that very quickly before it becomes a problem. Um, a key point here that your book brings up is that being grounded does not affect the circuit's behavior under normal conditions. Or um, So in other words, it, it, um, in the steady state, the, the non-transient uh, behavior of the, of the circuit is not going to be affected by the ground. The ground isn't actually affecting anything in this circuit. So everything, the, the way we would analyze the circuit is normal you know, as without the ground is exactly the same as with the ground. It's just now that we're, um, now we're providing a reference potential. So it can't like build up an extra charge on top of everything else. Uh, okay, so four small things, uh, and we combine a few of them in this one, All right? What is the electric potential at point B? So it looks like if this is zero volts right here, if this is where the ground is, a lot of times we define the ground to be zero volts. We can start here. So here's zero volts, here's zero volts, here's zero volts, here's zero volts. Everywhere with blue dots is all zero volts. Um, now, when we jump across the resistor, it depends how much current is going through there um, for how much voltage we'll gain or lose across the one ohm resistor. So we're kind of stuck at this point. But um, the voltmeter, remember, was an infinite resistance thing. And the voltmeter looks like it's connected. So the, the voltmeter acts like a break in the circuit. So because it's infinite resistance, you can just, the whole circuit just acts as if this thing isn't even there. Right? Infinite resistance, no current's gonna wanna go through that branch. And another thing that we learned is that we can just kind of ignore this ground for how the circuit's gonna act. So the circuit acts a lot like, and we can ignore the and meter, we can, it looks like we just have the one ohm resistor there and the one ohm resistor there and this 12 volt battery. We got this one ohm, we got this one ohm. Uh, and all of our blue dots, which are at zero volts are right here, basically. Uh, and then point B is between the one, this one ohm resistor and the positive terminal of the battery. So it looks like point B is right here on this diagram. So remember the ammeter has zero resistance. It just acts like a wire. So we also didn't include the ammeter right here. We just replaced it with a wire. Uh, okay, so looking at this circuit, this is something we've seen before. The one ohm and one ohm, we could combine to two ohms. Uh, tw two ohms connected across the 12 volt battery. Looks like it's six amps. So there's six amps going this way. Six A or six amps. Uh, so it looks like Point B is that, so this is zero volts and we're gaining, so remember V equals IR. So if I is six amps and the R is one ohm, looks like we gain six volts across there. B is at six volts. So the answer is six volts, right? So analyzing this, so a Kirchhoff loop roll, just to make sure we're not going crazy. If we start here and we start going, uh, this way around the circuit. So wherever we start at was zero volts. Looks like we gain six volts. We lose 12 volts across the battery. Uh, and then we've gained six volts across this, this one ohm resistor. So uh, gain six, lose 12, gain six again, and we're back to our starting point. So it seems to make sense. So uh, point B is at six volts relative to the ground. All right.